Welcome back, heroes, to some more custom NPC scripting. So we're continuing on with learning how to make custom NPCs fly. Last episode, we went over explosions. And also, there's a few things in there that are kind of important for this episode. So if you haven't looked at it yet, please go ahead and check it out. It'll be uh, in the playlist or whatever. Just look up the, you know, the same title, but part one. Okay, anyways. So what we're going to do now is add another method in here called fly block. Fly by block. So the idea is that he's going to fly, but he's going to fly by putting a block under him. In my opinion, this actually is a lot cleaner. It's uh, it's far less uh, explodey. So, you know, there you go. All right. So again, we're going to need the direction uh, equals this dot. Uh, pretty much a lot of this is uh, going to mimic what we've already done, but we're going to do a little, a few things differently. So in this case, what we need to do is when the function starts, we need to actually have, uh, we need to clean the glass if it exists and then add glass if it, if it needs to be. Essentially, I'm using glass because the idea here is that if he's not standing on anything, that means he's standing on air. So we need to turn it into glass or some kind of block. Comma and then, uh, oh right, I'm, I'm not even done yet. So t tell me there's an error before I'm even done, jeez. Uh, so what we need to do here is we're gonna clean the glass here and then we're gonna add the glass here. Now the thing is clean, cleaning the glass is actually going to be useful elsewhere and I'll show you why. So we'll go ahead and add clean G as a method here and we'll go ahead and add said method here. Uh, so that would be clean G, clean, oh wait, sorry, function, clean G, and there we go. So now we have the function here. So the idea here is that we have to keep track of where was the last place that he actually planted some glass. And then when he has to make a new glass, delete the old one and make the new one. So we're gonna have to add one more thing to our fly script here, which is going to be called uh, the, was it glass position? So we'll, yeah, we'll do glass pa pause. Actually, let's just, let's just do D pause just because that's, that's a little simpler. And then we're gonna make this equal to an XYZ uh, coordinate. So XYZ. And uh, well, I mean, the last position, I guess if we're gonna, we don't really need a first position now that I think about it because the idea here is that if there's no position that we don't want it to clean. Oh yeah, that's right. So we want the position, the last position, and we also want to determine whether or not we need to clean it. So uh, let's 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 just say clean as a, uh, oh no, wait, we already have a clean, don't we? Uh, clean glass, or uh, yeah, C glass. Yeah, there we go, as false. So. What we're doing here is we have a boolean that determines whether or not we need to clean the glass and the last position that uh, if, if we do need to clean the glass, the last position that it should exist. As of right now, there's nothing to clean because, well, we don't need to, so there you go. All right, so in the clean glass, if we have this dot, what, what do we call it? It was like, uh, see, yeah, if this dot see clean glass, so we put this in an if, I don't know what I'm thinking right now. All right, so right now, when we call this method, if we need to clean the glass, we'll do a thing, otherwise we'll ignore it. So that way we could use this method later. So if we need to clean the glass, what we need to do is npc.remove block, I believe it was, is what it's called. Yeah, it's remove block, but it doesn't start with an R like that. I don't know, it's, they do these, the, this capitalization thing gets on my nerves, but it's just, a, it's just the way things work. Okay, so we want to remove the block. And what we have right now is we have the previous position as mentioned before, as GPOS. So this dot G P O S dot X, this dot, uh, you know, X, Y, Z. Okay. So we tell them to remove the block at the X, Y, Z coordinate that we currently have. And then we have cleaned the glass. So we don't need any more glass. So what we could do is this dot C glass is false. So if we were to spam clean glass, it will remove the last instance of a glass existing and then set it to false. Now you could do this as any kind of block. I'm just using glass because glass is already semi-transparent. So it's a little easier to work with. You could also do like a Nimbus cloud or I don't know, whatever, or 
Even better yet, you could do a block, uh, which you set the texture to nothing, so that way it doesn't even look like there's anything there at all. I don't really have a clear texture at the moment, so this is what we're going to be using. Okay, so we have the clean glass, uh, which is this dot clean G, I, I believe. Yeah, this dot clean G. So we clean whatever glass was there before, and now we need to add one to wherever the NPC currently is. So first we need to determine whether or not we actually need to even do it. So we need a check here to determine if the uh, if there is air below the um, the player. So what we do is world dot get block, and then we take uh, we put in the uh, NPC's coordinates. However, we put the NPC Y at minus one because we want the block under the NPC, not where the NPC currently is. And then what we need to do, well, actually, yeah, that gets the block. So we need to see if it's air. Here's the thing. If it's air, there will be no block because air blocks are treated as null. So if there, if uh, this returns null, then we know that the NPC is currently standing on air block, which is the bad. So now what we do is we can uh, create a block wherever the player is standing. So first we need the block in question that we actually want to set. So we go glass. Uh, so we're going to do glass block uh, and we're going to want to set the block to let's see it's world uh, create item. So you create the item in here. You you give it a string, which as as I uh, will also mentioned, uh, all of the what you could actually look up what kind of methods and whatnot that you could use are on the scripting API, which I was linking in the uh, description below. Uh, so this is under the world object. You could uh, use create item. You could create any kind of item. In this case, we're going to be creating a block, which uh, I believe these are like damage values and size, which overall I don't believe even matter for this case. Okay, so there you go. G glass, bl glass B is now a glass block, so we could use this later. Uh, however, what we need to do is we need to set the last position, as you recall, of uh, where we where this block is going to be placed. So, gpos dot x equals uh, the place that we want to set it. Remember, we're setting it at this spot here. So, this is pretty much straightforward. Okay, so as you can see, we set it to the x, y, and z value. However, the actual x, y, and z value of the player is a double value. So it's anywhere between like a block value, like let's say 65 and 66. So it could be 65.526434, whatever. So all of that is something that we don't want. So we're gonna use a function called the floor method uh, from math. What that will do is we'll take the value and strip of any decimal. So if you have, uh, what would it be like 65 point anything, it is now 65. That doesn't matter if it's 65.1 or 65.9, it is now 65. Because we want the block that's below the player. We don't care about rounding for that. So let's go floor and apply it to all of these spots. So now we have the exact coordinates of where we want to place the block. So now let's go ahead and do that with world.set block. So this takes a XYZ coordinate. So we got that here. This dot uh, GPOS dot Y. Uh, this dot GPOS. Oh no, it's, it's the GPOS dot Z. And then we need the block to actually set it to, which is the glass block. I believe that's all that we need. I'm going to go ahead and uh, to clean this up a bit, do this. So that way we can see everything that's going on. And voila, we got the block is being set. Now, all we need is one last thing because, hey, we set a block. We need to remember to clean it. So we're going to go ahead and set C glass equal to true. So this dot C glass equals true. All right. So there we go. So what we have is for this function, we clean whatever block previously exists. We get the direction, we move the player, and then we set a block under him. Now let's go ahead and try this out and see what ends up happening. All right, so first off, we need to change this to B. Oh yeah, that's right. There's one last thing. So uh, one of the things I've noticed that when he loses a target because he's no longer targeting me, He'll start to basically fly away. Hang on, is there a problem there? No, okay. He'll start to fly away. So this is where the uh, method comes in use. If he no longer has a target, then let's go ahead and do fly dot clean glass. Uh, or no, sorry, it was clean G. 
Cause that way, if uh, if there's if there's glass to clean, then he can go ahead and fix it. Let me go ahead and fix whatever's going on here, though. Oh right, comma. Remember, separate all your your functions in this by commas. All right, are you uh, are you happy yet? No. Oh, clean glass also not separate your commas. So very important. Make sure you separate these out so you know which functions which, and also anything that you're adding to your object. Make sure you separate them by commas. Now, are you okay? Yes, it looks like he's okay now. So let's see how he functions this time. So as you can see, he kind of plopped the block there, but he didn't really quite fly. Uh, and he's still coming after me, so it looks like we need to fix something else. NPC.remove block is not a function. Uh, let's fix that. Oh, right. So I used NPC.remove block. I wanted world.remove block. There we go. Okay, so that should be what he wanted there. And yep, he is now still using the actual like block. And as you can see, he was kind of moving up towards me. He didn't quite get there. Uh, let's see. So if I sit here, eventually he'll start moving upwards. Uh, it's currently not doing what I wanted to. It's it's working, but he's a little bit slow to get to me. So we could fix that. We did add a speed stat. So let's go ahead and get him down here. Actually, first let me. Let me lose this targeting real quick. All right, there we go. Now, remember we added a speed stat before. So what we could do is we could up that speed stat and move him even further. So now he should be flying towards me. Either that or I need to fix the directionals. Let me look at my math and make sure that's correct. All right, there we go. I just upped the speed a bit and that seemed to work out better. It seems the, the biggest problem with this method is based upon his speed. So. Right now it's set to five, so as you can see, he's pretty much he's flying around me. And if I if I let him sit there, he'll he'll get to me. He's uh he's currently dashing around me, occasionally throwing the punches. <laughs> but as you can see, you gotta kind of stand away. And if they have a ranged attack, they might use it because they're currently on a platform. So all it requires of them is to get close enough, and they'll fire at you. But as you can see, the NPC is flying around and he's got a little platform to sit on and he's trying to get to me. So it's a success there. And like I said, if this block was um, was trans uh, was like transparent, it would actually look like he's just flying around. And you could adjust like, uh, as I mentioned before, you could adjust that speed so you can make him fly at whatever speed you want uh, utilizing this method. Let's try four and see how well that works. All right, come on, Kiwi. You, you got to reset your health a bit. You're, you're looking a little bit damaged, man. Okay, so we punched him. Let's see it. Let's see how, how well he's flying towards you. So he's getting up there. He, he doesn't he doesn't have quite a lot of speed. Also, his range does kind of mash into this. Once once he's like, like, once I'm out of range, he stops targeting me. So it stops actually flying towards me, which is why uh, in DBC, you should extend their range as far as you can. So that way they don't like just lose pursuit just because you're a little too far away. Like, look at this. If I keep going like this, bam, he just stops caring. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to mention. So as you can see, there's there's two scripts here that you can use, but you should definitely ensure he has no fall damage. That would probably help a lot. All right, so now he can't he can't actually take fall damage, so that's good. Oh, uh, one of the things I've also noticed is that when their alliance is set to aggressive, they have a tendency to be a little more aggressive at getting towards you, or at least keeping their targeting. Uh, I don't, that's just probably a custom NPC thing. But there you go! We got flying NPCs with two different methods that you can use, depending upon how, how much of a spectacle you want to be making with that. And uh, yeah, you could like use uh, not allow flight to be a defense anymore. <laughs> All right, let me know in the comment section below what you think of this kind of flight. If you have any other kind of methods you would like to use, any comments, questions, or concerns, and we could take it out from there. But anyways, guys, thank y'all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time. Take care and goodbye.